include the resource file that we just created as a source file that will get built. We're also going to be using some includes, so we need to be sure that the search path will be included as well in the build. We also need to add a couple of libraries. Let's go ahead and add those in as well. So here you can see I have added the XAML runtime.lib and uuid.lib. That's all we need to do in the sources file. Let's go ahead and close that and save it. Now let's take a look at our C file. Nothing much here except a skeleton. Let's go ahead and add the includes that need to be added. So here you can see I've added uh, a few includes. Some are specific to the XAML runtime em engine, but I've also added one for resource.h because of the resource file that we have included. Next I'm going to go ahead and paste some code into WinMain. We'll walk through the code to explain what it's actually doing. So I've replaced the entire contents of WinMain, and here you can see I declare a few variables. Next we initialize the XAML runtime engine. Then we're going to get a pointer to the singleton for the XAML runtime. This is because there is a single object out there for the XAML runtime. We just need to go out and get a pointer to that object so we have something to work with. Now using that pointer, we need to get access to the resource file that we included. Now that we've done that, We'll go ahead and prepare some of the data structures for the client window, including the title of the window, the fact that it's an overlapped window at 0, 0 for the coordinates. And here we're going to specify the specific resource that we want to access. If I go back and open up the resource file again, here we can see that the name is XAML. If I open it up, the specific resource within that is IDR underscore XAML1. Double click confirm that yes, that is indeed the XAML code that we created earlier. Next, we're going to go ahead and call an API to create the host window using XAML. Once we've done that, we need to get a pointer to the root of the XAML code. So this call to get root element will give us the root of the XAML at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. Everything up to this point is more or less template code. So it might look a little scary having this much code here. However, this is just all the setup. Pretty much will be used the same each time. But now we need to actually access the elements within the XAML. So we're going to declare a button. It's of type IXR button base pointer. Now we need to locate that within the XAML. To do that, Using that root object we got before, we're going to call find name on my button. Remember before, that was the name that I gave to the button that we created. Next, we need to create an event handler for when the button is clicked. To do this, I'm going to add a little bit more code to our project. Let's go back up to the top of our function, and let's go ahead and paste in this class. So I've created a class here called Button Event Handler. It includes a method onClick, and what it will do is it will just display a message box that says Silverlight Sample. That's really all that happens here. Okay. Now down below, back where we were before, here, creating an object of type Button Event Handler, the class that you saw above. I create a click delegate. So now you can see here we make a call to create delegate. In this call, we will connect the handler that we created. And here we can see that it has that method on click. And we will call this click delegate. Created that object here. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can take the button object that we created up above and connected to my button in the XAML code and we can add the click event handler click delegate that we just created. Now that we've connected all of our delegates, we can go ahead and we can call start dialog 
which will cause the dialog to pop up. Let's go ahead and build this and see how it goes. We can see that our build was a success and our application is now built. Now let's take a look at our application in action. So here you can see the Windows CE desktop on my device. I'm going to go ahead and start the Silverlight Lab that we created. Now you can see that the window has popped up. Here's our button that we added. And when I click it, you can see it does pop up a dialog that says Silverlight Sample, just as we coded. One thing to note here is that this is Silverlight code calling a native API. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And see I click the button again, and so on. If you're wondering about the limitations of Silverlight on Windows CE, you need to know that the supported feature set is the same as Silverlight 2.0 for the web. In addition, the performance of the Silverlight engine and applications is limited by the speed of the processor, the graphics hardware, and the quality of the display driver on your target hardware platform. So how can Adenio help? Adenio is a Microsoft Gold partner and is the 2009 recipient of the System Integrator of the Year Award in both Americas and Europe, as well as Training Partner of the Year for the Americas. We have extensive experience with all the tools that we've looked at today and can provide complete Silverlight solutions quickly and painlessly. We can also introduce you to one of our partner design houses that is qualified to do graphics design for your user interface while we assist with the code behind that ties everything together. This includes porting your existing Silverlight and WPF applications to Silverlight Embedded. We've followed this model in the past to create multiple customer solutions, including the Embedded Systems Conference keynote demo that was used to first demonstrate Silverlight on Windows CE. If you would like more information about Adenio Embedded, our services, or Silverlight on Windows Embedded, please visit our website or contact us at the email address as shown here. You can also contact me directly with questions at the email address at the beginning of this presentation. Thank you.